All right, so a little bit different video today. So this is quite funny as uh, I've been doing uh, my hobby for many, many years now, and I'm finally getting this, what I've been uh, like thinking about getting for many, many years already. Well, for a long time anyways. So uh, today we will be unboxing the uh, Fluke 52-2 thermometer, which is, well, at least uh, if you ask me, one of the best k-type or similar type probe thermometers out there which you can use for uh, extreme overclocking purposes so uh, most of the time like this far i've been using both the 10 mars tm 82n which is a dual input k-type thermocouple uh, uh, meter from 10 mars that is a taiwanese company the good thing about this compared to uh, one of the like very common ones like the uh, Voltcraft K102 is that it has a bit larger display than the Voltcraft. The, both of these meters are dual input ones as uh, I personally would not get uh, a single input meter because they usually cost the same as a dual input one and uh, then you are just limited to one uh, heat source only. So if you get a dual input meter you can monitor two things at the same time, like uh, both CPU and graphics card, and uh, maybe uh, if you run memory on LN2, you can monitor both of the memory sticks at the same time if you have an individual probe on each of the sticks. The good thing about both of these two is the price. So the uh, 10 mass TM82N costs around 60 euros from uh, eBay from Taiwan with shipping included. That doesn't include the potential uh, value added tax that you might have to pay once it gets stuck at the customs. So uh, the price of this particular meter is really, really good. That's why I would recommend this as a like uh, starting meter for anyone who wants to try extreme overclocking for the first time. The uh, Worldcraft K102, as it's a European one, it costs at least the same as the 10 Mars, uh, usually a bit more. But of course, if you are buying it from like Germany, if you are living in Europe, you are already paying the uh, value added tax in the original purchase event. So uh, these are quite like the same. These, these two meters are quite in the same price point. But if I had to choose between these two, I would always take the 10 Mars. The, uh, this one is a little bit more like uh, it feel, It seems to have a bit better response time than the Voltcraft K102 and I really like the larger display. The, uh, the second display on the Voltcraft K102 is really really small so it's very hard to read the uh, second one if it's quite far from your uh, head or from your eyes. The, uh, it's a little bit better on the 10 mass so uh, it's not that small compared to the Voltcraft, but still, neither of these meters is as good as the one we will be unboxing today. So, uh, of course, these are very like good from value perspective, but the uh, quality you can get with Fluke meters is really from another planet. The hardest part about this meter and all other Fluke meters is pretty much the price. So uh, the price of new Fluke 52.2, it starts around like 400 euros in Europe. If I wanted to get this here in Finland, it would be over 500 with value added tax and everything. And uh, the more expensive uh, model, the 54.2, which has the data logging features that starts like at 500 plus in Europe. And uh, Finland, I think, 600 to 700. So they are really, really expensive meters. They are like, uh, they meet the laboratory standards. So they are not like aimed for amateurs like me. So there's pretty much like no sense to get one of these new uh, for like minimal use, which most of the guys like me are doing. So there's not really much sense to pay the price of a new one from the store. So uh, this is the 52.2. It, it, it is a dual input K-type and other, uh, well, it supports other type probes 
co uh, I mean on top of the K, but uh, so this is a dual input one. The uh, 50 series multimeters, I mean thermometers, there are four individual versions. The 51.2, which is a single input meter, like the 52.2, and they both lack, they both lack the data locking features. And uh, 53.2 and 54.2, they are the ones with the data locking features. And 53 is just a single input one, and uh, the 54.2 is dual input one. Uh, so uh, this one I happen to actually get from uh, European eBay. It's uh, supposedly it's uh, new, like never used, and the price was really really good. I paid uh, 155 euros for this meter with shipping included. To most it would sound still quite high, but you can't really get better than that, especially if it's like unused, uh, I mean totally unused. If you see any of these meters to go below 100 euros, even used, that's that's a really, really good bargain. It's really hard to see them. Usually when when you try to search for them, you uh, can usually see the used ones to go for like 200 euros, 250 or something like that. But anyways, so this supports most of the uh, different type probes and the main difference to uh, the Tenmas and the Voltcraft is that this also supports the uh, T-type thermocouple probe. T-type can measure much lower temperatures than uh, the other type probes like K, so uh, you pretty much need one of these meters if you ever tried liquid helium. Because, for example, with the Voltcraft, if it measured colder than minus 200, it would just give zero zero. So it or just lines, so it cannot measure colder than minus 200. The 10 mass I remember from some uh, old footage by SF3D. I remember seeing it that it was able to measure colder than minus 200, but of course it's out of spec, so it's like not completely re reliable. But uh, anyways, even this doesn't support T-type uh, thermocouple. So uh, you are still limited to just K-type, but yeah, so T-type officially can measure down to minus 250 degrees Celsius. So that's good. And the biggest thing why I wanted to get this meter is that it has a really large display. It's easy to see both of the inputs and uh, that it has real-time uh, response time. So most of the uh, other meters like these they are quite slow on updating, so they might just go like when you are doing your initial pull down, they might just update one degree per second. So it's like minus 15, minus 16, minus 17 every one second. But the flukes, they really have real time uh, update on the uh, display, so it's really, really nice. And uh, one like side thing, if you are interested on the fluke, 50, 50 uh, series 2 thermometers. You should read the uh, modding guide made by Tin at xdevs.com. You can actually uh, modify the least expensive models like the 51.2 to uh, support all the features of the more expensive models like 54.2 or 53.2. So check that out. I will link it down in the de description below. Accuracy wise, it should be pretty much as good as you can go. So uh, here it says in the specs that uh, accuracy below 100 degrees Celsius is 0.2% plus 0.3 degrees Celsius for J, K and E type probes and 0.5% uh, plus 0.3 degrees Celsius for T type probe. But of course, these are paper values. I checked the uh, uh, paper accuracy value for the 10 mass and it was 0.05% plus 0.7 degrees Celsius for uh, K-type. So I'm not really like sure what's the uh, what's like the practical difference in accuracy between these two, but I think they are pretty similar. But the response time is really the key about these meters. And of course, the uh, la larger footprint and the larger display. 
So yeah, so I think without further ado, we could unbox this and let's see and see what comes with the unit and then just to our final conclusion, I will do a separate testing later when I have some LN2 so you can properly see the uh, real-time responsiveness as I what I already said. So here's your guide booklet. It's some accessories booklet. Here's the actual uh, unit itself and two included fluke branded K-type thermocouples. I'm not fully sure like how accurate these are because the uh, probes themselves make the most difference when you are trying to measure really cold temperatures with K-type uh, thermometers. So uh, it doesn't really matter if you use a 10 mass TM meter or a Fluke 52 meter. If the probe is bad, it might just read like minus 160 when you dip it in LN2. So you actually have to bin the K-type probes yourself. But nowadays I don't really see much sense in that when we have these uh, uh, Kimping cooling uh, hand selected and like more stiff K-type thermocouple probes which have extremely good like response time and accuracy. If when I dip this uh, Kimping cooling one in LM2 it reads uh, minus 196.1. Uh, the temperature of LM2 or the boiling point of LM2 at normal sea level air pressure is uh, minus 195.8. My altitude is somewhere around like 200 meters above sea level. I, so I think the uh, uh, accurate uh, level should be like minus 195.9, but it doesn't really matter. No much difference at all to the uh, sea level value anyways. But yeah, so... Of course, you need to have these smaller ones if you want to measure temperature for, from something small like memory heat sink. You can't use the big Kimping cooling ones for memory. They are only meant for like CPU and uh, GPU pots. So you need these if you want to measure temperature from like Northbridge pot memory heat sinks. So uh, you should still have some of these laying around, but as I said, you have to bin these yourself. The quality difference varies hugely. So as I said, you could have one that measures minus 160 when dipped in LM2 and another one that measures like minus 196. So uh, there's a huge difference. So it's like 36 degrees difference between two individual probes. So it's a saying. So anyways, you get two. I will test these myself when I get some LM2 again. And now we can actually take a look at the unit itself. So yeah, it looks pretty much it's non-used or unused. So I can put that to the side. All the like the original plastic is still in place. So it's 52.2. As you can see above the LCD display, you can uh, determine the 52.2 and 51.2 from this button over here, which you can use to choose between input 1 and input 2. And you can even uh, uh, calculate the temperature difference between the two individual uh, inputs. So it's quite handy, but of course we don't really need many of these features when we just uh, run parts on LN2, we just want a good uh, measurement. So it has a nice stand. So you can already see the difference in size when we put them side by side like that. So the display size is just so much bigger on the Fluke. So it's one of the main reasons why I wanted to get it. It tried to measure something, but you can, you, if you uh, happen, to so, uh, happen to see it, the update is extremely fast on the uh, Fluke. So let's see if I so here are the both of the inputs on the top part of the uh, unit itself. So if we put one K-type couple to the uh, input one, check the uh, LCD display how fast it will read. 
25.6 I'm pressing my fingers against the probe so you can really see how fast it is it's like updating or pretty much like every decimal or nearly or close to every decimal so that's why it's so much superior compared to these cheaper ones but anyways so that's pretty much it of course the price is high so I can't really recommend a meter like this to uh, someone who is just starting there's not really much sense at all for example if you some of the like the younger guys are trying like phase change cooling or dry ice for the first time ever they usually don't have that much money uh, lying around so it, there's no real there's not like there's not much sense to use 300 400 or even 500 euros on a meter like this you can pretty much get the same end result with this one over here so i still recommend this to anyone who's just starting but it it's quite nice to have a meter like this laying around if you are really trying to push like really expensive parts to the absolute limit so that's why i finally wanted to get one considering that i've been doing this hobby for many many years and uh, well I am sitting in quite high in I, I mean I'm I'm sitting quite high in the rankings so yeah you can still beat many of the top guys with a cheaper meter like this but anyways so I think that's pretty much it when I get some LN2 I will do a quick uh, measurement comparison when I dip the um, probe in LN2 and you can see the difference of each of these meters but anyways uh, I will link the Tenmas and the Fluke in the description down below so if you want to get one if if you are just starting let's say you are you have a plan to test some parts on phase change cooling dry ice or even ln2 and you are wondering which meter you should get i will link these down in the de description below now i know that asus for example they have the uh, uh, cryogenic meter feature in the oc panel but uh, OC panel now is quite a discontinued thing. It, it's, not, it's no longer uh, included with the most expensive uh, boards like the Apex or similar. And I personally never really liked it. You have to use a separate power source from uh, SATA power to power it. And the LCD display is quite small. So uh, I would still always go with a dedicated meter compared I mean compared to the OC panel so uh, I wouldn't use that of course if you have one laying around and you want to just try of course you can if you don't want to use the money on a meter like this but this is just my personal opinion but anyways so that's pretty much it this is the unbo uh, this is the unboxing and short overview of the Fluke 52.2 uh, meter I will do a more dedicated test later when I get LN2 but anyways Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.